Hello, I'm Lorna and welcome to my channel Thread and Yarn. So if you haven't been here before, on my channel I like to share things that I've made for my wardrobe and things that are around my home. Mostly things for my own wardrobe. <laughs> I do lots of sewing, knitting, natural dyeing and uh, a bit of quilting as well. And normally my videos are about things I've made, things I'm planning on making, showing you sort of steps along the way and asking for help or advice as well. But today I thought I wanted to focus on mending the clothes that I've made. So I'm going to be going over some things that I need to mend and some pieces that I also need to alter that I've made and don't have any damage but that I just haven't really worn because I need to alter things about them. Um, and it feels like a shame to try and make a whole new shirt when all I need to do is make a slight tweak to a part of the fit. Yes, grab a cup of tea or something and uh, a project and if you feel like it, we'll just chill out and I hope you enjoy a nice cosy video. So my me made wardrobe is very important to me. I've spent quite a long time developing each of the pieces and I've invested time and money and love into each of them and I want them to last and last and also be able to keep up with my life which often ends up being outdoors or um, quite active or quite hands-on when I'm sort of making things or out in the garden. So I often find that I'm wearing through things and that I don't want to just keep replacing them or making new things, I really want to invest in them for years to come. So this episode I'm just going to <laughs> go through my ever-growing mending pile and I thought it would be fun to show you some of the mends that I've done recently and some of the things I need to do and then I thought we could uh, just have a cosy sort of sit and mend together. So if there's anything that you need to fix um, or if you just fancy a little cosy watch then um, that will be the second half of the video. So I hope you enjoy this slightly different video and that it inspires you to do some mending if you haven't tried any before. So mending is something I've kind of always done but not really known what I was doing. I think quite a lot of bodging, um, I mean I think I was probably taught how to sew on buttons and things like that but in terms of managing like a, a patch that's wearing through or a tearing clothing I don't think I ever had any proper teaching or guidance on how to do it effectively. I kind of just made it up as I went along and what I thought looked right or what I thought would kind of do the job. Some of them worked, some of them didn't. I think as I've developed my sewing and my knitting that's gotten a lot better just naturally but I also went to a workshop, when was it? I think it was about Christmas time, run by a lovely lovely lady called Sky Pennant and she is a professional mender and darner and has this amazing wealth of knowledge. She's writing or has written a book called Well Worn which I've just pre-ordered and I'm really excited it's going to arrive in May I think. It's her first book and I'm really happy to support her because she's just yeah really delightful and the workshop was so useful and it was really lovely to learn some actual techniques and I, I really appreciated that I can't wait for my book to arrive so that is also um yeah support Sky um she hasn't asked me to say any of this I just really like her work uh I'll put a little link up to the book um or a little picture up of the book so you can find it but also I don't know enough about the technical skills of darning to to teach you or anything like that this is more of a mend along and uh, yeah, I'll show you what I'm doing. There might be some bits of it that are wrong or that you might do differently. Uh, so yeah, head to an expert for, for proper guidance on how to do it. But I hope you enjoy this, yeah, this sort of mend along and um, we can all, yeah, figure it out together and really invest in our clothes. <laughs> so as I mentioned, I've got a somewhat hefty mend pile. It just feels like it was starting to grow and grow and I felt a little bit guilty making new things when I had this massive pile getting bigger in my sewing room. Some things are mine, some things are my partner's. He does mend his own clothes and does a really good job and some of these are things that are around that I want to show you because I'm really impressed. <laughs> 
And um, what was I saying? Oh yeah, so it's just growing and it feels like a bit of a shame to keep adding clothes to my wardrobe when I've got some really lovely things here that I want to be able to wear again. Uh, the damage is from various different things. Um, I'll show you in a minute. But I also wanted to show you some of the supplies that I've got and I'll talk through them as well. But whenever I, probably because I'm unable to throw things away, but whenever I snip a new skein of yarn, you know when you get the like the yarn worms, that's what I call them anyway, where they're like the, the extra bit of dyed yarn that's helped tie the skein together so it doesn't unravel into madness as soon as as soon as you uh, untwist the skein. I keep those and I also keep little bits of the end of balls or skeins of yarn. These sorts of lengths of things are really useful for, for patching up little bits. They're mostly on, on knit or stretch garments. These are really useful. And then also, and I've got lots of little balls of wool as well, left over, because I quite like mixing colours together to make an interesting patch. And a little naturally dyed skein of Aran. I've just got this one little skein and I don't really know what to do with one tiny little skein of Aran. It's only about 20 grams, so it's not enough for a headband or anything. Um, so I might use it for some mending. This is dyed with madder and I love that rust colour. It came out so well. <laughs> I'd love a jumper in this. Anyway, distractions. Uh, and I keep fabric scraps as well for patching up sort of uh, linen or cotton garments. Um, and I have fun deciding what contrast patch to do. I've got some other tools as well. So what I often use with a patch is uh, either cotton or linen. And then I use Sashiko needles, which um, is like a traditional Japanese form of patching, both to mend the clothes and also to reinforce them or to make the layers thicker and warmer for winter. And I've got Sashiko thread, which is a type of, well, it's a cotton, cotton thread, but it's really matte as opposed to that like embroidery cotton. And it's really strong and it comes in lovely colours and I just love, this is what I quilt everything with when I'm like quilting my Bilbo vests or if I'm making a quilt for the home I always hand stitch it with this Sashiko thread. I just think it's such a lovely texture, it's really strong um, and it's what I do patchwork um, patches with as well when I'm ending my clothes. So these are my supplies, this is my pile. Um, before I start going through it, um, just gonna have a bit of my tea. I've got some chamomile tea, um, and it's it's not the most inspiring spring day outside. So I've got a candle on, and I'm I'm feeling cozy with some hot tea. Um, yeah. So before I go through the pile, I thought I'd show you some mends that I've done recently that I'm pleased with. Uh, so I work at the moment. I'm doing a couple of different things, uh, which is how I like it. To be honest, I I like to have my days feeling a bit different to each other. Um, I work a day a week as a gardener and I do that at a house in Stroud. It's the house that I'm running the sewing retreat um, in, in the end of May. If you, this, you're new to my videos, I'm running a, a sewing retreat for a couple of days in Stroud, which is in the Cotswolds in the UK. And it's at this beauty, beautiful 18th century manor house. There is one place left on that retreat actually so I'll put the link down below if you're interested. Anyway I digress but I work a day a week in that garden so it's a beautiful uh, part of an 18th century manor. It's got a third of an acre garden and the owner wants to create a kitchen, dye and medicinal garden at the sort of bottom third of that third of an acre. And my personal experience with gardening is growing vegetables that's what I'm very passionate about and dye plants and I'm so excited to be helping you with this project and it's a real privilege to work somewhere so beautiful and we're just basically starting from scratch so it's a lot of work and it's very yeah I love it it's, it brings me a lot of joy being outside but I need some strong gardening clothes <laughs> I am gonna make some more so I've got plans to make some canvas dungarees and some more cord trousers but for the moment I've got these old gardening clothes that I've worn at my allotment and when I'm out walking uh, but they're starting to fall apart a bit and I do need 
some backup <laughs> clothes because these are my only ones really and you know sometimes I'll, I'll spend a day there and then I'll go to my allotment and I, it's nice to have a change of clothes <laughs> but I have this old wool cardigan so it's from a shop called Massimo Duty I bought it I think maybe over 10 years ago when I lived in a city and looked like my my style was very different and I wanted to look quite quite smart it might make you laugh thinking that this drab wool cardigan I made me look smart but it used to be this like really rich deep blue um I think it's got some I think it's yeah it's got some cashmere in it um but it's quite strong um and it's not fluffy or too soft and uh yeah I used to wear it with this little silk top um and it was small it was bigger than I think it's got a bit shrunk and it's really faded in the sun however I keep uh probably I like, moths or I catch them on brambles but I keep finding holes all over so I the first one I found I think it must have been about four years ago or maybe even more I didn't really know what I was doing and I just stitched up really roughly with a bit of um red thread that I had around it stopped the hole it stopped the stitches running but it doesn't look super nice it's not I mean it does the job but it's not very fun um visible mending has become a really big thing lately uh or over the last few years which you know is great we're really celebrating uh mending clothes and it's not trying to you're not trying to make them invisible so you're not trying to hide the age of your clothes you're not trying to um yeah hide the fact that you haven't bought something new which maybe maybe I don't know would have had some shame in, or something in the past but now we're actually celebrating it and it feels like a little mini act of like rebellion somehow but I have seen um like fast fashion brands recreating like styles as if uh, that are brand new but as if they have been damaged and visibly mended so what was like a challenge to fast fashion uh just garbage to be honest and destruction of planet resources has now inspired fast fashion to like emulate it but in a very artificial way i just find that like absolutely mind-boggling and kind of depressing however <laughs> i still love visible mending and i still love the idea behind it so I keep flashing you little bits of this, but this was a similar sized hole. Well, maybe it was slightly bigger than this. Um, and I have mended it with this yarn, actually, that's hanging behind me. This is a skein I dyed with Madder. And the skein um, is my fault. I thought I'd brought all my skeins in because they were drying um, just outside. And I'd left one out and it got a bit tangled. So... I didn't want to um I didn't want to sell that one so or put it in my Patreon boxes. So I'm using it as my darning thread. And I used it to fix my cardigan. And this kind of mend I really love and this is what Sky taught me at our workshop. You so say this this bit in the middle was the the hole that I needed to fix. You don't need to pick up any of the loose bits around it. You just uh, do a really good perimeter and then you weave in one direction all the way across and then you go in the other in the other direction opposite and you kind of weave over that hole and in the center you can hopefully you can see that I have actually weaved I've run like a warp and a weft uh, if you know anything about weaving that's like a horizontal or like a vertical um, strands of thread all the way across it um, quite close together and then I've taken my needle and my thread and I've woven it under and over each one and um, alternating each time and it creates this nice dense new fabric and then you can kind of fade it out around with little stitches and I did that I don't know maybe like a month or so ago and I've worn it in the garden loads and it's holding up really well and it just brings me quite a lot of joy when I see it it makes me very happy <laughs> and I'm glad it's such a contrast so that's the mend that I'm really pleased with. The other one that I've done recently, and you can see the sort of evolution of my mending skills here, 
Um, these are some old cords. I bought them on Vinted several years ago. They're like Lucy and Yak cords. So the fly stay, the bit that holds the fly in place, um, had sort of torn away from the interfacing. And when I first got these um, several years ago, I just machine sewed over the top in a slightly mismatching thread because I knew they were going to be for the garden. Um, but then it just kind of kept coming. It didn't really work. So what I've done since, um, well, this is not very neat, is I've put a denim patch uh, behind it because denim is nice and strong. It's got the tiniest bit of stretch in this denim, but it's pretty rigid. And then I've just sewn around the perimeter um, and I've gone across as well. And it just really holds it in place. And now it's not going anywhere. Um, so I can wear them again <laughs> because before people kept telling me it looked like my fly had come down um, and it hadn't. It was just like <laughs> stretched out so you could see the fly. And I got a bit tired of that um, and it didn't look great. <laughs> so even though they were gardening trousers, um, I am very happy that I've mended them. So I now have got my everyday gardening outfit sorted. Um, so I'm really glad that I did those mends. Something else we did recently um, that needs mending again in a different place is my partner's beloved um, wool like cardigan jacket thing. Um, I did this at the workshop as well. Um, I did the same kind of weaving as I was talking about on my cardigan and you can see the like ochre colour is going horizontally and then the white is going vertically and they just weave in and out like that. So that's my one that I did at the workshop. It's uh yeah it's quite neat. And then my partner um, I kind of told him what I did and he fixed the other elbow and I actually really like his. I think I prefer his. It's quite creative. It's really like taken the shape of the whole and kind of gone out in a really organic way. Um, I really like it. He's done such a good job. So now he's got two patched elbows and the cardigan lives on. It has also come apart at the sleeve and he is fixing this at the moment, not me. So he's got more of this orange yarn um, and he's trying to emulate the stitches of a rib. Um, for the and these little stitch markers is just where some of the stitches are running so yeah he's got an oh god I've dropped one off now he's got it into it as well which is pretty cool i have to sort this out <laughs> so i won't go through my whole mending pile because it's pretty big but i'll talk you through some highlights of things that i want to work on soon um so this jumper i really like it's the fern and feather by jennifer steinglass it was one of uh my older knits i think i made this maybe four or five years ago. But I used one skein of self-striping yarn with some leftover grey yarn that I had. I think it's actually more than one type of grey yarn. Uh, but it made this really beautiful yoke. It got mothed in various places. Um, so I've got a couple of holes at the armhole and a couple on the yoke itself. Where it's just the moths just like cut through basically it looks like um it looks like they've like really neatly snipped the yarn <laughs> um i think it happened in my old house it was an old cottage and they were just everywhere uh and it's happened all down the sleeve as well this is like classic classic moss damage where they've just gone for it all over um i often put a safety pin uh to try and catch the stitches that are running so I really want to fix this. Now I'm wondering, um, my partner had the loveliest idea that I could fix some of the holes uh, by darning the um, a bit uh, like patch in the shape of a moth to kind of, um, I don't know, uh, celebrate the moth in a way, even though I don't really want to celebrate their behaviour, but <laughs> it felt quite like, uh, I don't know, poetic and nice. I thought that was a good idea, but I don't think that I want to do it on the front because the yoke is quite busy already. I don't think I want a visible mend on the yoke, but I'm thinking it could be really nice to do a little moth here on the elbow. So I need to try and find some grey yarn to match up to do the yoke and just like delicately fix that hole. And then I think a little contrast moth here, maybe in like yellow or red. I could do it in this sort of rusty colour, although this is a bit too heavyweight. I do have a yellowy colour or some leftover blue yarn. Um, I think maybe 
some warm tone thing to pick up on on the pattern here would be nice rather than the blue um but yeah I'm, I'm quite excited about doing a little moth so i might do that later in the video uh i've got some socks that need mending just thinning at the back um and then not mending but altering so i've got this shirt that i really like it's a fiber mood honey shirt it's got this really sweet checked collar um and i was really happy with it the only thing is i don't wear it very often for one reason and it is that i did the bias um i did like a sort of bias binding cuff um around around the arm and it's too tight <laughs> so i when i stretch my arm out it feels it like gathers here really tightly and, I, and it's kind of uncomfortable and I've been meaning to sort it out for since I made it really which is about a year and a half ago uh, so I should really just sort that out so what I need to do is unpick the cuff and I'm hoping so I don't think I don't know if I've got any of the fabric left I reckon what I'm going to do is just let that seam out sort of decrease the seam allowance and just I only need to expand it by like a centimetre and then I think it'll be more comfortable. So I might unpick that and then re sew that on because I'd really like to get some wear out of this shirt. It's really sweet with a collar. I really like wearing it with a vest um, or a waistcoat. Uh, I think it's really sweet. I've got a black uh, needle cord waistcoat at the MM Miller. That I really like wearing it with it. So that's what I want to finish soon. Um, oh, I wanted to show you as well. We did a uh, little sash co patch uh, on my partner's shirt. So this was what I was saying about getting a piece of fabric like linen um, and laying it over the top. The patch that needed mending was in the middle here. And then we've just done some uh, stitching all around the perimeter and then just across the middle with a sashko cotton just to hold it in place. And I think it makes a really sweet elbow patch. The other one's going now as well, which is why it's in this basket. Oh yeah, this I made for my partner. Uh, for his birthday years and years ago it's a traster jumper by Jennifer Steinglass as well I was definitely in a very Jennifer Steinglass colour work jumper mood I yeah I love this one he loves grey uh, and he loves rust and ochre so I knitted this for him and he wears it quite a lot I was really pleased with it it was probably one of my first sort of extensive colour work jumpers and I was so happy with how it turned out he often goes through things on the elbow. I think he must spend a lot of time at work with his elbows on the desk. <laughs> but this is just started to go at the elbow here. So we've popped a safety pin in to hold it. And I want to do a nice visible mend there on that one. And this is Aaron. So I think this colour could be really cool. I've spoken as well before about my um, very well-worn, gosh, what's it called? Truss cardigan. It's got these really cool textured panels down the, down the side. Uh, I wear it all the time, but it has just gone in the underarm. I don't think this was moths. This has happened recently. I think it's just stretched out because I've worn it so much. So I need to fix this. I am wondering whether to do a couple of different colours here in the armhole, but they're quite subtle. Um, I thought I had some of this grey left over, but I can't find it anywhere. So I might just do a little colourful patch there. So there's a lot of knitwear to fix. And the last thing is this pair of Pomona pants, which I wear quite a lot. They're with the linen that I dyed black and it's, I wear, often wear them in the garden, so they haven't been treated that well, to be honest. But they've gone in the bum. I need to patch this up. So I'm going to find a dark piece of fabric and I'm probably going to pop it on the inside and then I'm going to stitch over the top and I'll probably do that on my machine. However, I get the feeling that this fabric is now quite worn and I don't know how long they'll last, but I would like to get another summer out of them because they are pretty comfy. But when they're starting to degrade to the point where I'm not sure I can keep patching them up, then I'll take the elastic out of the waistband, save that for something else because that's going to last forever and I will probably just pop them on the compost, <laughs> which is nice because they're completely linen and I sewed them with cotton thread. So 
yeah, that feels nice. And I'm sure I often put my fabric scraps from projects I've made on the compost and they disappear pretty quickly. So that feels quite nice and reassuring. So those are the things that I need to mend. Yeah, I'm gonna crack on. I've got my cup of tea. I've got my supplies with me here and I'm gonna work through a couple of things and show you what I'm doing. So if you've got any projects that you fancy working on as well, then I'd love it if you mended along with me or if you just fancy sitting and knitting or stitching or, or just chilling out, then that's lovely too. I think what I'm probably gonna start with is a bit of darning. I'm probably gonna start on this jumper, this jumper first and we'll see how we go. I also wanted to show you this little quilted pouch I made for my partner for Christmas. <laughs> I just used up some linen scraps and I quilted it and lined it and it's where he keeps all of his like knitting and darning supplies so there's some needles in there and yeah some scissors, cable needles <laughs> and a darning needle as well which I'm pinching <laughs> for today. It's a cute little thing how he puts it um, in his bag when we go knitting. So I've got my jumper with me. I am going to work on the little elbow patch and try and sew up a little cute moth. <laughs> I've decided to go for the white colour because I feel like it's in tone with the rest. It's a visible mend um, and it's also the right weight. I had thought about doing the rust which would be cool but it's, it's, quite a, uh, it's quite a fine, this is a sock weight yarn which isn't quite right. So I'm just getting a length and this one I'm just going to do, I think I'll do it all in one colour. Um, I'm just getting a length of the white yarn. And I'm just going to snap a bit off. And I've got my darning needle. There's a sort of hole in the middle here and we've got some fraying edges. So it's going to be quite a big moth because I want to go around the whole area. And I want to make sure there's like a good perimeter around it and that it's not going to sort of, the stitches aren't going to run. Also you can pop it like something like a darning mushroom um, inside and then it gives you like a firm surface to work off of which is quite nice. I think I will actually do that. I think it's going to help me see what I'm doing. So first of all I'm going to bury the, the tail inside. And I'm going to do it so that it's got a good perimeter. Um, and I need to think about the shape of my moth. I think I'm going to want its head up here towards the top of the jumper and its wings kind of down here. So I'm going to start by weaving a horizontal line across. And I'm kind of just going over and above. And I'll weave that end in afterwards. And I'm just going to keep working my way down now doing horizontal lines. So it's not a tutorial, I'm not going to show you all the steps, but um, I'm just going to, yeah, mend. And I hope you fancy a little mend along with me or working on your craft project. <laughs> um, yeah, I, th I feel like mending has become a lot more popular over the last several years. I think lockdown probably had something to do with that and also, you know, there's been various financial crises and buying new clothes all the time just isn't very sustainable. And I think we've got a lot better at understanding, well, on the whole, of understanding where our clothes come from and the fact that, you know, everything really is man-made by somebody, or person-made. Um, I certainly felt quite sort of distant from the making of my clothes. Thinking back, I think I actually thought that machines made clothes and that only in the worst places were people sort of being forced to to make them by hand. Um, and, you know, there's you can make clothes by hand in a 
mindful, considerate, respectful, fair way. But it just costs a lot because you need to pay people because it takes ages to make clothes. <laughs> I'm sure if you make your own, um, as I'm sure many of you do if you're watching this, you know how long it takes to make clothes. Um, and having some respect for that. Um, yeah, it's just something I've, I've built over time. I don't. I just don't think I had any real awareness. I thought that um, that people might man machines, but they mostly made the clothes. Uh, I only learned in the last couple of years that there's no such thing as a crochet machine, and that every crochet thing you see has been made by someone. And then when you see them for sale so cheaply, it's quite horrifying. Um, but yeah, so I feel like we've learned the value of respecting our clothes and respecting the resources and um, impact on people that it has. Uh, but also, um, I think some big brands have really, big brands, big brands to me, brands like Toast champion it um, and have made it quite like a desirable thing. They've done this, uh, they do this campaign for their, uh, their mending service, uh, which I always think is quite good where they say that any toast garment you've ever bought, you can bring back and have mended by their team of menders, um, which I really like. Uh, and I think it's just also a very good idea showing that, you know, these garments last for life um, and they might be expensive, but if you invest in it, then um, it's, you know, it's worth the investment because you'll keep it, keep it forever, which I think is a, is a good idea. Um, but they've got some lovely pictures on their social media of the things that they've made. I'm not sure how much this is going to look like a moth in hindsight because this is quite a wide darn and the white's really blending in. So it might be quite subtle. <laughs> it might be a bit of a practice run and then I make a moth that's really obvious on something else. But either way, I'm really happy that I'm mending it because I really like this jumper. So I've done some vertical line, uh, so horizontal lines across. I'm just getting to the hole now, <clears throat> excuse me. So they won't be weaving in and out of anything. They'll just be loose lines like this. But that's okay because we'll be weaving weaving it together. But you see what I mean? You can't really see the, uh, the white that much. I think what I might do is a very basic patch and then stitch the shape of a moth over the top of it to sort of extra reinforce it. So I've been working away on this. I've done all of the horizontals and then I've done the vertical ones weaving over and under all of the horizontals. I've done it on this side, so from here to here. Um, and I've, yeah, I've gotten up to where this thread is. So this is what it looks like when you started doing that. And, it, and then this is the half that I haven't done yet. And you can see I've still got some hole and it just generally is not very secure. But once you've done that, it makes this whole new woven area which is great. So yeah, I'm just going to keep doing this white base around the, yeah, the hole in the grey jumper. And then I am going to put a contrast moth on the top and just kind of uh, hand stitch it, that little design in place. Have you got any makes or garments that you've bought that you really love and haven't really worn because they've got patches that you're not sure how to fix? I know that especially with like tears in clothing or sort of delicate knitwear. I've been a bit nervous in the past um, or trying to, you know, trying to figure out the best way to mend them. Um, so just having a go really and reading guides online just gave me a lot of confidence and then going to this workshop really helped. But I think just have a go. I mean, there's nothing that can go wrong really with me you know, trying to reinforce this hole in the jumper. Maybe it doesn't look um, quite as neat as somebody who is more experienced, but it's gonna it's gonna reinforce it, and it's gonna make it more more wearable instead of it just sitting in the pile in my in my uh, yeah in my basket. So I hope that gives you a bit of confidence. <laughs> or are you a tap hand and have you? made any really cool mends that you want to tell us about. Um, yeah, actually, what could be really fun is if, um, I have to figure a way, maybe if you if you Instagram me um, any pictures of makes that you're, that you're really enjoying, or that, um, any, any mends rather, that you're really enjoying, or that you've done in the past that you're proud of, or yeah, any of your mends really, then maybe I can share them in my next video. Um, 
and I think that'd be really fun to see what you've all done. Um, especially if there's anything you've done during this video or afterwards, I'd love to see that because I think everybody's all a bit different and I love seeing the colours that people have chosen that are always so, you know, individual. Um, so that I think that could be really fun. <laughs> it's a nice sort of like mindless in a good way. I find thing to do as well. And sometimes I don't want to be working on a complicated knitting project um, where I have to look at the pattern all the time and sometimes hand quilting can be a bit like hard work. It actually can be quite you know straining on your hands and your wrists going through those layers of fabric. So yeah I find this quite like a, a low effort, low impact thing to do. There's still some areas which are a little bit thin but you can start to see this like woven network and a good base for my moth. So I finished the base and now I'm just starting embroidering my little moth on. I've done a little head and I'm just doing a body and I'm gonna go back over him as well. Um, and then I'm gonna do some wings. Have you ever done any mending that is supposed to look like an actual thing? Um, I don't have loads of embroidery skills <laughs> or experience, so. I'm kind of winging it. Oh, accidental pun about the moth. But I'm quite excited. I've just realised that this is the pat the hole that's on the underside of the arm and that there's another one that's on the top. So if this moth doesn't look great, it's just good practice for the other side. <laughs> right, I think he's getting a bit large now. It's going to more like a hornet, I'm concerned, which is not what we want. So I'm just going to go back up the body and make him look a little bit neater, to be honest. I suppose I could have done this in a lighter weight yarn and then it would have been less bulky but I quite like that he's got a bit of a 3D structure. <laughs> Maybe the colour makes him look more like a bee. I'll say bee instead of hornet. <laughs> I'm not sure it looks loads like a moth. So I finished my moth. My yarn just broke there which is annoying. That's his body and his head and now I'm going to do some wings coming down either side. It's definitely not going to look like a moth. If you decide to stitch a moth onto your makes and you do a better job, please send me a photo so I can have some inspiration. <laughs> I've been, um, well we grow lavender in the garden, my allotment, I've been hanging it around the house. I don't know if it's one of those things that's kind of just something people do and is quite comforting, <laughs> or if it actually has any sort of efficacy. Have you found anything? Um, I kind of live in fear of it after this is how it's coming along. <laughs> After the last place I lived, because I lost some really nice wool, it really upset me. Um, and I, I didn't realise the extent of the damage until we were moving and I lifted up my basket and it was just, yeah, I won't give you nightmares, but it wasn't good. Uh, I put everything in the freezer, obviously, for a while. But I, I did lose some really nice hand-dyed yarn. I'm nearly done with this guy. I'm wondering if there's any other attributes that would make him look more like a moth and less like an insect that would sting you. Here he is. <laughs> Not a particularly good moth, um, but has brightened it up. These are my tails. Um, I'm going to weave them in um, behind here. But I've made sure I've left some nice long ones. But... Yeah, so this is the underside of it, and I've got a, a gap for another one as well. And that's my little pretty poorly stitched moth, but I'd love to see if you have a go um, and what yours look like. It feels like a bit of fun anyway, and it's certainly reinforced now. This, this hole is not going anywhere. <laughs> that's probably the most reinforced mend I've ever done. So I thought next up I could mend my partner's shirt. So as I showed you earlier, this is the patch that he did and I'm just gonna do something really similar. So getting a piece of linen, folding over or pressing over the edges like that and then laying it over, this had a tear, but I'm just gonna lay it over a weakened patch and then I'm gonna stitch it down with some sash co thread. So if I show you the other sleeve, it's got this weakened patch above, well, sort of just below the elbow. You probably can't see it that well there, but 
um, it's lighter than the rest, the corduroy is worn away and you can see it's kind of stretched here. So I'm going to pop before that has it, before that gets a tear, oh you can see it better from further away look, I'm going to pop a patch over it, probably that way around and stitch it down. Um, and yeah I've got some Sashiko needles and thread. I use the Sashiko needles for hand quilting because they're, they're just really sharp <laughs> and they're really a nice length for this kind of hand stitching and quilting I think. And what you can do with these as well when they're this length is push through like multiple stitches at once. So I'll show you what I do and I'm probably more experienced at this because I've done hand quilting for a while and it's kind of a similar sort of um, process. So I've got my needle threaded, I've got my patch and I'm going to lay it over the area that needs reinforcing and you can pin it in place as well. It doesn't have to be a square or a rectangle, it could be any shape really that you can uh, press the edges in. You could do some really you could do a really cool like set of like a, I don't know, <laughs> suddenly it popped into my head, you could do like a moon and stars or something. Um, like it's basically applique, if you've done any like applique on um, quilting or dressmaking projects. You're kind of just doing the same thing, laying a, laying a patch on and then stitching it in place. So I sort of roughly pinned it in place. And what I'm going to do is just stitches around the outside to begin with, just to secure it. Um, I find it helpful to have it on a flat surface, like a, um, a book, or I'm going to use my darning mushroom again just to get started. So I've got like a hard surface to work off of. It also means that you don't go through to the other side. Um, my camera stand broke uh, a couple of months ago, so... <laughs> I'm balancing you on a cone of wool, but I really wanted to show you what I'm doing. So here I've pushed through a number of stitches. I hope that's focusing okay. And um, I'm just kind of doing a bit of a pattern repeat over these ginghams where I do two stitches in each gingham. And once I've done all of them, then I just push it through. and I make sure it's not too gathered and I kind of ease it out like that and I'm just going to sort of work over the last few um, gingham squares I do need to buy another camera stand <laughs> I got the last one on um, like Gumtree or Facebook Marketplace or something I think it was already pretty battered when I got it. But these stitches in the middle are just kind of holding the patch down and reinforcing the area and also just make it look really pretty. And add a bit of decoration, I think that might be my last bit. Uh, so I'm just kind of going to weave my end in under here. I'm not coming through to the top but I am sort of catching the layers in between. So here's the finished patch, a nice secured area. <laughs> so I hope you enjoyed my vending video um, and that you thought the little moth was fun. Here he is again. I would love to see it if you decided to make your own um, or any of the makes, uh, amends rather, that you have done or that you are currently working on. Here's, um, that's not the patch I did. Here's the patch I did. <laughs> So these are the ones I've done this afternoon. They're actually very coordinated. Um, but I've still got a big pile to work through. Uh, but yeah, this is what I could get through this afternoon. So it was a nice, cosy afternoon with a cup of tea. And I hope you enjoyed mending with me or watching along. I'm going to do another video soon about my spring and summer wardrobe and how I use pieces throughout the whole year um, and then like layer them up and how I match different pieces of my wardrobe together to do that including some recent makes um, that are currently still in progress but that I'd like to show you. And anything else? Oh yes, I'm currently working on a little sock pattern inspired, inspired by wildflowers uh, seed heads. 
So I'm going to be asking for testers in the next couple of weeks. So keep your eyes out for that. Well, eyes out, keep your yeah, eyes open. Look out for that <laughs> if you're interested. Um, this is knitted up in the sock yarn that I dyed. Um, yes, I'm going to be at the uh, Great British Fibre Festival at Cold Harbour Mill on the first weekend of June. I think it's the first and second. So if any of you are near Devon or making the trip to the festival, I'd love to see you there. Please come and say hello. I'm going to have some of my naturally dyed yarn there along with the uh, knitting um, and quilting illustrations that I make, put some pictures up. But it'd just be lovely to see some of you. Um, I've also put the link for the retreat for my website in um, the description. So check that out if you're interested in a cosy weekend of sewing in the Cotswolds. There's just one space left. Um, there's also a couple of spaces left on my Patreon if you're interested in the spring boxed here. I'll put up a little video here, but it's where I send you a little collection of either some naturally dyed um, fabrics and some other like linen fabric scraps or some naturally dyed yarn along with like a little pattern and a little illustration, which I think is quite a fun, cozy little thing. I send those out four times a year, so inspired by the different seasons. I think that's all the updates I had about those sorts of things. Um, as always, get in touch with me if you've got any questions or comments or um, things you'd like to share that you're doing. So I hope you enjoyed this video and I'll hopefully see you soon. I hope all of your projects are going well and that you're having a nice start to spring. Bye!